Our Lord and our God, we thank you for bringing us to this wonderful gathering. We give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the adoration. We thank you for bringing us to this wonderful teaching session in which you will glorify your name in our lives. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. This evening, open our understanding. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Let's ever say, God bless you. This evening, by the grace of God, we are starting one of the most important teachings you are ever going to hear. The general theme is hearing the voice of God. Today is just the first lecture to lay the foundation for those teachings. And that first lecture, according to your outline, is principles of hearing from God. Let's look straight away into our memory verse, which is in the outline before you. And let's read it together loud and clear. That art and air. Can you say it again loud and clear? Say it again loud and clear. My brother, do you understand that memory verse? My sister, is it clear to you at all? The person who created man and gave him two years to hear saw that those two ears were in position and yet he's saying if you have ear you better hear so the ear that he is talking about there and the hearing that he's referring to there is not just physical hearing he that had an ear let him hear what the spirit said unto the church meaning that you can hear a lot of noise but once it does not penetrate you have not heard you can hear but you are not listening you have to understand these principles. Look at the introduction. And I want you to take careful note of the selection of the words of that introduction. The most important need of any serious, 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 not the unserious ones. The most important need of any serious child of God is hearing clearly from God. When you begin to hear from God, progress begins in your life. The reverse is also true. When you begin to hear from the devil, destruction begins. It is a great period in your life the day you learn to hear God's voice clearly, plainly, and on a daily basis. In fact, when God begins to talk to you, this transient word loses its hold upon you. What the others run after and they want to die makes no meaning to you. When you begin to hear God, faith rises in your heart. When you begin to hear God, you stop doubting. When you begin to hear God, things begin to happen. You begin to enjoy prayer. Because you are talking to him now and he's talking to you. Any one-way communication is always boring and uninteresting. Communication with God satisfies the deepest longing of the human heart and God's heart. In fact, we are created to fellowship and talk with our creator. That is, God misses our fellowship. You need to be able to hear clearly the Lord your God. Now, it now goes on. Hearing God's voice does not come automatically the Adamic nation is born deaf to the voice of God therefore for most of us hearing God's voice has to be learned as a matter of fact the key to all God's blessing is hearing and obeying his voice I want you to note this very carefully very very carefully one of the greatest diseases, if it's not the greatest, amongst Christians these days is inability to hear clearly what God is saying. Many people roam around the house of prophets because they cannot hear themselves what God is saying. If God calls now and says, my sister, by this time next year, 2nd of January, that will be your wedding day. Because I will provide for you a husband and you get married that day. Then, since God has spoken, you find that that person will not cry again if he's been crying. Because now he has a direct information. Beloved, the day you begin 
to pick out the voice of God. It's a great day in your life. And God wants all of us to be able to communicate freely with him. Very, very sad when you look at the life of the Israelites. God wanted to be communicating with them one-on-one, one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one with everybody. But the first time God spoke, they told Moses, please, sir, uh, you'll be talking to him. You'll be talking. When, whatever he says, come and tell us. We don't want to talk to this fellow again. We don't want to talk to God again. Ah, his voice is too thunderous. You talk to him. They technically relinquish their privileges unto Moses. And it's very sad. These days we have a lot of man of God, man of God syndrome. Man of God, man of God. Bishop, lay hands on me. This pray for me, that pray for me, this pray for me. The truth is this. If you will consecrate your life and be serious with your maker, and God opens your eyes and begins to talk to you, you will discover to your amazement that some of those prophets from where you have gone to pray years back, you are 200% better. But you refuse to discover yourself. I pray that by the time we finish this teaching, that members of this fellowship will be able to open their mouth and say, Thus saith the Lord. And it will be so. Look at the view of God in this situation. Look at Numbers chapter 11. Numbers chapter 11. God asked Moses to select some people so that they will be assisting Moses. And Moses did so. Then as a result of what Moses did, let us see some people who were not invited into, into the party, but they spiritually get crashed into the party. It's the same thing that happens during words of knowledge and words of wisdom. Somebody, somebody that the word is not for can catch the overflow. And even the person is meant for, if it's not serious, he will not get anything. Numbers 11, verse 25. And the Lord came down in a cloud and spoke unto him, that's Moses, and took of the spirit that was upon him and gave it to the 70 elders and it came to pass that when the spirit rested upon them they prophesied i did not cease they prophesied when the spirit came upon those 70 elders that wanted to be assisting moses look at verse 26 now but there remained two of the men in the camp the name of one was eldad and the name of the other medad and the spirit rested upon, upon them and they were of them that they were written, but went not out unto the tabernacle. They, did, they were not in the meeting, but they prophesied inside their house in the camp. And there ran a young man and told Moses and said, Elder that made that are prophesying in the camp. That is how, what happened? They have no permission. They were not in the meeting. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of Moses, one of his young men answered and said, My Lord Moses, forbid them. They forbid them. Huh? They are not here. How did they get it? They cut the overflow. And in verse 29, look at the answer of Moses. And Moses said unto him, Envious thou for my sake, will God that all the lost people were prophets, and that the Lord will put his spirit upon them. So that will make life so easy. When brother A can hear from the Lord, brother B can hear from the Lord, sister C can hear from the Lord, you can all hear from the Lord. When somebody is talking rubbish, the sweet of God will say, this one is a lie. This one is not true. This one is this, this one is that. Because the Lord opens your understanding that way. So in the next few weeks, beloved, we are going to be looking at the knowledge of God. That is to know the person behind the voice. We are going to listen to teachings on deafness to God. We are going to listen to teachings on when God becomes silent and is not talking again. We are going to listen to teachings on how to discern the voice of God. Out of the three voices that are always talking, yourself, the devil, and God, how to discern which one is God out of these three. We are going to listen to teaching on how to develop hearing here. We are going to receive teaching on deliverance from spiritual cataract and deafness. We are going to listen to lectures on how our deafness can be healed. Then we are going to listen to lectures on all the false voices that are around us. We now move to another teaching on Holy Spirit and hearing from God. We are going to be taught on how, what are the hindrances to hearing from God. Then we are now going to a series of teachings on how God speaks. All these in the next few weeks in this place. All this in the next few weeks in this place. How does God communicate? If you look at your 
outline there, you will see many things. But there are three ways that God reveals himself to us. Number one is through revelation. Number two is through inspiration. And number three is through illumination. Revelation is when God reveals something to you. Revelation is when you remove a veil from something so you can see what is inside. Inspiration is when the Holy Spirit, the anointing falls upon you and things that are not clear to you start to become clear. Illumination is when God opens your understanding beyond your own capacity. Those are the three methods by which God communicates. Revelation, inspiration, illumination. All this will be made more clear as time goes on. Without being led by God in life and in service, we miss our divine target. Without hearing God, it is not possible to do His will when you don't even know what He asks you to do. Beloved, if God opens our eyes and, and He shows you who you are, and you see a little bit of the glory of your destiny, you will not sleep with that boyfriend again. You will not tell those lies again. Because you will see that all those sins you are committing, they are just dulling the sword of your destiny. Many people are struggling to take jam now. I want to go to the university. I want to go to the university. But before they even got into that place, the enemy has already finished their destiny in the secondary school. So no matter what degree they get, they come out, they have already played into the hands of the enemy. I just pray that God will open the eyes of these young ones. And we need to pray that prayer really hard for them. And some of them really have to pray for themselves. Because in years to come, many of the young ones that they're talking to now, they're not hearing, they will be the one who will feel pressed during deliverance. Because if, if their parents are be able to hear what they're hearing now, they will not become candidates for deliverance. If they had heard that time, that is not right to, to be naked and stand on a Bible to pray, they won't do it. If they knew that it was wrong to go to Babish and have a bath, they won't do it. If they knew that it was wrong for them to dash you out to your husband or they dash your husband to you, they won't do it. If they knew that incisions was wrong, they wouldn't do it. God will help us. Anything done outside the will of God is a wasted effort, wasted destiny. But you see, revelation, receiving information from God is the root of spiritual life. When I was in my former church, I loved that place. I didn't want to go. I didn't want to leave the place. And we were all trying, struggling. Oh Lord, make this church grow. Do wonders here. Work miracles. Do all kinds of things here. Work here by your power. We are praying. But things were getting rougher. One night, I had a revelation. In that revelation, I found all of us who are SU members, Christian Union members, who born again, who talk about being born again in the church, I found all of us gathered together in the revelation and we are fighting one man. This man was so tall, his head was touching the ceiling of our church. Very dark man. We were fighting him. We fought and fought and fought him. It was as if we were not able to even touch him. After some time, somebody distributed us whip to all of us. They let us use it against the man. We started. Where? 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 The more we beat the man, the stronger he became. In that revelation, it was as if this tall dark man was the one responsible for the spiritual problem of that church. We were beating him. After some time, he began to laugh. When we find him laughing, we now call the meeting. This is all in the revelation. He said, look, I've been fighting this man since. We're not getting anywhere. And he's even laughing at us. What could be wrong? Some people gave some suggestions. Somebody said, I may be... Is this our horse whip that is not effective? So, so okay, let's assume that the horse whip is not effective. How do we test it? But they said, let's test it on the body of one of us now. So they, they said they forced somebody to turn his back. Fear, fear, fear. He screamed. So the horse was the horse whip was effective. Then the man started laughing at us. Say, you came here to fight me, and now you are fighting yourself. You don't know anything. I just heard a voice from heaven. I said, son, get out of this church and go and do what I want you to do. I have not committed the salvation of this church into your hand. Beloved, I, from that day, they didn't see me again. They sent 13 delegations to our house to beg me to come back. To the glory of God, 10 out of those 13 are in MFM now. 
Recently, one of them came to my office and said, Daniel, although I was one of those who came to beg you those, those days. But if you did not listen to God that day, do you see the millions of blood that will be required from your hand now? What he said shook me to the bones. Revelation is the root of spiritual life. Knowing God's will is the root to straight path in life. One teaching that is desperately needed today is the ability to hear clearly from God. Somebody was singing before this service, says, speak love for yourself and is hearing. Ah, those who are in the past generation. Now, hear Lord for your servant is speaking. It's the reverse. We need to wake up and know what to do. You want to hear from God clearly, distinctly, without any ambiguity? Then I need to ask you a question. And that is the most critical question that we need to ask here today. And that question is very simple. Open your Bible to Job chapter 42 verse 5. Now, I am not talking Bible theory now. I am not interested in theories. If I come here and I come to tell you the principle of biology, I will not benefit you. I come to teach theology here. Many people have taught theology that in hell fire with their theology. Job 42, 5. Please, if you find it, can all of us read it out loud from our Bible? What does it say? Can you say it again? Yes. Can you read it again? Uh huh. Mm. Can you shout it louder than that? I have heard of thee by the hearing of the air. So, but now, <laughs> my eyes said thee. The question is this. Want to hear clearly from God? The question and the most critical question this evening is this. Do you have an unforgettable encounter with the Lord? That's the first question you should ask yourself. Have you been visited by the Almighty? The question is not how many churches you have been to before you got here. There is no point in saying, I was mother in Jesus, mother of Israel, in one church. I was chief deaconess. I've been to this. I've been to that. No. The question is not whether you are a pastor. The question is not which important post in church do you hold. The question is not whether you come from a Christian home or not. The question is, have you had an unforgettable encounter with the Lord? Have you met the Lord? That's the question. Have you met the Lord? If you meet the Lord, we know. Nobody needs to tell you stories. You will know. You know you had an encounter. You know something happened to you. I knew the day it happened to me. That day, I didn't know I got home. Whether I walked on ground or grass, I didn't want to talk to anybody again. But I wanted that communication to continue. Have you met with the Lord? Not have you met with baptismal card? Or you have met with deliverance? Many people go for deliverance and are not born again. Because if they are born again, some, some of the things they are saying God removed, they, 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 it's because they are not born again that is there. How can police come and arrest somebody on deliverance ground? Say, bring that man. That man is a thief. We need him at the station. So a guy is praying. He's doing deliverance. And so after he has been to court, he will come and continue. He's not born again. Now that he's in trouble, he believes deliverance is the general medicine. I said, brother, why did you fall into this sin of fornication? I have repented. I have done deliverance. I see the deliverance will remove the consequences of the iniquity. Have you met the Lord? If your answer is yes, the next question is, how did you meet him? Was it in singing, preaching, praying? What date was it? Do you have a record of it? Can you point to an instant in your life when you can say, yes, I met the Lord. I met the Lord. Many church goers, beloved, unfortunately, they are second-hand disciples. Second-hand disciples. Those of you who are married, you know, when you were cutting that sister, it's as if you want to be with her always, and you used to want to be with the man always. When you have an encounter with God, you don't talk about loneliness, because his communication with you satisfies the longings of your heart. Since you are cutting this sister or that brother, 
you will definitely not be satisfied with a third party telling you about him or her. You will not be satisfied. You will like to hear directly. This is the way it is with the Lord. It is one thing to have somebody telling you about the Lord. It's another thing to have a personal encounter with him. The majority of the present day believers are just second-hand variety of Christians. For you to have effective power in your life, it must be a first-hand matter. Christianity is not rituals. Christianity is not books, services, grammar, ceremony. No. It's not when you have a second-hand knowledge. If what you have about Christ, about God is second-hand knowledge, demon spirit will show you paper. The sons of Skiva went to that demonic person. They had only second-hand knowledge. In the name of Jesus, whom Paul preached, not whom they preach you, come out. The demons knew more than the sons of Skiva. They overpowered them. The power impotence of the church today is due to the fact that most Christians in church don't have first-hand encounters with God. For the name of Jesus will exert power in your mouth. It must be true first-hand knowledge, not second-hand. You must be able to hear clearly from God. Every Christian can and should know how to hear the voice of God. You don't hear from God, your spiritual life will be stunted. Will be stunted. And hearing from God, beloved, is not something for spiritual giants alone. God wants us to experience daily communion with Him. As far as God is concerned, it's abnormal for a Christian not to hear His voice. But the good news of the scripture is this. According to Hebrews chapter 8 verse 11. He said, Jesus, the same yesterday, today, and forever. The same yesterday, today, and forever. Listen to this, brother. Listen to this. 99% of Christians who only hear God speaking to their spirit. God speaks to your spirit, not your brain. The human mind is sometimes like a marketplace or as a radio turn on on full blast. So, but, but that our inner man deep inside, the core of our being, that's where you begin to hear God speak. That's where he communicates with you. He deals with your spirit man. The Bible says the spirit of man is a candle of the Lord. It speaks to that spirit inside of you. The spirit talks back to you. He speaks to you, talks back to you. You must have heard me sharing this before. The name of the brother is Brother Lucky. I don't know who gave him that name. One day he wanted to go to work. As he was about to go out, he had God speaking to his spirit. Son, continue the prayer, don't go. He was praying, oh Lord, I'm going to work. I cover myself with the blood of Jesus, blah, blah, blah. He wanted to go out. This inner voice said, continue. He prayed by the door. He had taken his bag. After 10 minutes of prayer, he wanted to go out. He said, no, continue the prayer. 20 minutes he was still standing. And I got upset. He said, ah, I will be late now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And he went out. The last thing Brother Lucky remember was that he was inside a taxi cab at Oshodi. The next time he would see himself, find himself in the thick forest. Find woman breast sexual organs cut all over the ground found himself amongst ritual killers he was naked and he was the next one they were going to deal with he was at that level he opened his eyes and saw them he began to pray as he began to pray they turned on him they charged at him he said mr man you are saying something that thing you are saying is disturbing us stop saying it he kept quiet and he began to pray inside. They came back again. Said, Mr. Man, that thing we ask you not to say with your mouth, you are saying it inside. Stop thinking it. And the brother found that there was trouble. All of a sudden, you remember a word of scripture that says, If I perish, I perish. And it blew out in explosive tongues. And as it blew out in explosive tongues, the whole of the place went into disarray. A white wind blew into the place. And somebody held him. Ran with him outside. When they were about to get to the main road, the person had disappeared. By the time Brother Lucky, we know where he was. He was at Ore. 
that day, God communicated, he abandoned. Thank God for his life. But there are some who don't hear anything at all. You can't continue like that. It's a dangerous life when your spiritual monitor is dead. Now in our natural lives, there are many ways to communicate to people. You can communicate to a person by speaking verbally. Sometimes you can communicate to a person by waving your hand. When somebody waves you down. You may say, it's okay, it's okay. That means, keep quiet. Sometimes, a nod on the head. Some, those of you, when you were kids, when parents have important things to discuss, they don't want the children to hear. And you are in the sitting room. They nod you out of the place. With that nod, you jump out quick. Sometimes you are invited to somewhere to, for a party. And they serve you food before your parents. And your parents don't want you to eat. He winks at you. That is, don't eat that food. Sometimes a certain way of looking is communication. So there are various ways that we human beings even communicate amongst ourselves. Likewise, there are various ways that God himself communicates with us. Look at the vehicles of divine communication in your paper there. The way God speaks. All this will be dealt with in details later. But there you just have a total list of the material. God can talk to a person face to face. The way he spoke to Adam and Moses. You say, is that still possible? Oh yes. As far as God is concerned, nothing is impossible. God can speak to you by voice. God can speak by dreams. Unfortunately, that's the area where most people have become experts. But his advantage with dreaming is that you must sleep before you dream. If a woman is in labor and they ask you to pray for the woman to deliver, say, I want to sleep so that I can hear God talk to me. Because God only talked to me in dreams. So I want to sleep and dream. And many people are always dreaming about who to marry as if the wedding will take place in the dream. Open vision. That is, you are not sleeping, you see it. Close vision. That is, you are praying and you are seeing something. Trance. That is, your physical senses are suspended that moment until it clears off. By angels. Angels are still moving around these days to talk to us. By writings, by miracles, through the written word, reference to passages. And sometimes you are praying, you just have a Bible passage drop into your spirit. You never thought about that passage before. And you go there and open it. Anointed messages and teachings. Like sometimes you come to the house of God, there is a body in your heart. And in the message of that day, God answers that question. Anointed counseling. Working with holy men and women. Anointed music. Anointed meditation, your conscience. Everybody has a conscience. Anytime you are doing something bad, Mr. Conscience will say, This is bad. Whether you are a Christian or you are not a Christian, you have a conscience. Your conscience is the policeman of your soul. That's your conscience. The voice of that conscience is the voice of God. And if you will allow that your conscience to be incubated by the Holy Spirit, it will now be talking to you clearly from the Lord. The burden of the heart, divine ideas intuition you just know you don't know how you know you just know internal understanding impression on the heart inward witness inner voice outer voice you are hearing voices from outside loud and clear close outer voice you are hearing voices but the people around you are not hearing just like samuel heard the voice of the lord but eli sleeping a few feet away from him did not hear then there is a still small voice that talks quietly to your ears. There is a sudden impulse, favorable and positive circumstances, difficult circumstances. Then there you see a list of gifts of the spirit. Word of wisdom, word of knowledge, faith, healing, working of miracles, prophecy, discerning of spirits. All this will be explained to you in these teachings. Interpretation of tongues, Remembering the truth, intercession from within, something inside of you just wants to continue praying for the pin, for the thing, for the person. Something is telling you you have not prayed adequately about this. Continue praying. It's the voice of God. Conclusive evidence. The Bible says, By their fruits you shall know them. Then divine visitation. When you sit down in your house, praying, all of a sudden the angels moving, or God Himself moves in. 
and you begin to discuss with God. Man is body, soul, and spirit. Look at Proverbs chapter 20, verse 27. What I'm doing tonight is just an introduction. Proverbs 20, 27 says this. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. And 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. 1 Corinthians 2, 11. Listen to this wonderful scripture. 1 Corinthians 2, 11. For what man knoweth the things of a man, except the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit of God. So he said, what is it that knoweth the secret and the deep things of man? Is the spirit that is inside you. So God normally speaks to our spirit. God informs our spirit. Our spirit will now pass the information to our mind. The human spirit has a voice. That voice is what people call conscience. The conscience of somebody who is not born again is unregenerate and an unsafe guard. But the conscience of somebody who is born again, as you continue to turn your spirit, train your spirit through the word of God, turn it inside the fire of God, and through regular prayers, your spirit man will know how to catch information from God. Isaiah chapter 30. We're about to start praying now. Isaiah chapter 30. Verse 15. Isaiah chapter 30. Verse 15. For thus saith the Lord God, the only one of Israel, in returning and rest shall ye be saved. Now listen to this. In quietness, in quietness, in quietness, and in confidence shall be your strength. In quietness and confidence shall be your strength. Look at Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 7. Ecclesiastes 3, 7. A time to rend, a time to sow, a time to keep silence, and a time to speak. Quietness or stillness is essential to reception of information from God. If your life is too noisy, you don't even know when God is speaking. I want you to understand this very well. So you now say, what do I do? Do I do so that uh, I can be hearing the voice of God? The first one, make sure you have a living encounter with God. Number two, beloved, cultivate the habit of prompt obedience to the Lord. Prompt obedience. The longer you delay from obeying God, the harder it becomes. Lot delayed in obedience. And that was his undoing. Be prepared to look foolish in the eyes of people. The Bible says to become truly wise, you have to start by becoming a fool. A lot of people stumble on this in scripture. Noah was building an, building an ark on dry land. It was a very foolish thing. But it was the wisdom of God. So when God says do something, do it very quickly. If you don't do it, or you delay in doing it, he may not talk to you again. His voice may not come the, the clear way it used to come to you again. But anytime God gives you instruction, you carry it out immediately. Yeah. He's willing to talk to you again. I want you to understand this very well. What God may ask you to do may look foolish. But once he has spoken, you must go and do what he wants to do. Naaman was asked to go to the river Jordan. It looked very foolish. It's the wisdom of God. Number three is this. Be careful what you hear. Be careful what you hear. Don't listen to gossips. Don't listen to slanders. Don't have friends who will pull down your spiritual life. Anytime somebody is talking to you, and you say, this thing you are saying, 
can you repeat this before the person? And the person, no, ah, no. Tell the person it's a child of hellfire. Why are you saying it? I used to have a white man's friend. You will talk, talk, will be listening to you. Then later I will turn to you and say, this thing you are telling me, does it edify? When you hear, does it edify? And you know it's all gossip. What he's telling you is that you shut up. The fourth thing you should do, take time to meditate deeply. Deep meditation. Joshua 1.8 tells us that the book of law should not depart from our mouth, but we should meditate upon it day and night. Meditation is very important. The fifth thing is this. Receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. If you have not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, you better do so very quickly. If you are in this meeting this evening and you don't pray in tongues, you don't speak in tongues, I honestly don't see how you will make it. Because the enemies of man are, are even bombarding those who are speaking. How about those who don't speak at all? And your prayer life will be low. You need to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Don't get yourself confused with some funny teachings that people are teaching around. They will say, hey, speaking in tongues is different, different gift. Only some people will be doing it. No. If it was good enough for Paul and Peter, then why are you denying yourself? It's good enough for you. Reverend Shoemaker said, every believer ought to have all the benefits that God provided for them, including speaking in tongues. And the Bible says, these signs shall follow them that believe, of which you are one. In my name they shall cast out them, they shall speak with new tongues. After that initial baptism of the Holy Spirit, you will first of all receive the giver. Then you can go to number seven to receive the gifts of the Holy Ghost. Baptism of the Holy Ghost, that one is different too. Then receiving the gifts is different. That's how to begin to hear God clearly. The next point is this. Don't judge people by what you see in your physical eye. Don't. Don't get involved in that one. You won't hear God. And the last but not the least, always pray fervently. If it's only two minutes you got to pray, pray it fervently. God is satisfied with okay. somebody who wakes up 12 midnight and for 10, 15 minutes, you pray body, soul, and spirit with full concentration and with power. And for you to want to do night VG and you are sleeping and waking inside the VG. God is more satisfied. With that, your 10, 15 minutes, that's hot and with fire. It's okay with God. And you want to pray for three hours and half of the time you are asleep. And sometimes you have converted your Bible to your pillow. Conclusion is in your outline. All believers must have at least one way by which God talks to them regularly. It is therefore important for you to take decisive action that will remove all blockages to hearing God's voice. And your homework, search the scriptures for more vehicles of divine communication. Let's rise up and feel it. The three prayers I want you to pray now is for those who are serious about the issues of their destinies and about what they want God to do in their lives. It's for those who are tired of just going like that. You don't know what to do. Direction is not clear. I want to do this, I want to do that. But did God ask you to do it? You want to go to the university? This course you want to study, did God ask you to study it? I want to see many people who came from the university and they never use the certificate for one day. So you are a pastor. Who, who, has, who told you that you are a pastor? Are you a pastor because God has called you? Or because you believe you can get money? Who told you that you should be running Kabu Kabu with your car? Who told you? Do you need to hear clearly what God wants you to do? So it's for those who are tired with this kind of situation. And they want some form of visitation to start in their lives tonight. They are the ones who should pray this prayer with boiling anger. My father! I want to see you! Uh, <laughs> sisters, are you in this service at all? Can I hear the sisters saying it loud and clear? Yes. 
Are you are you serious with your sisters? Can you say it again loud and clear? Oh yes. Brothers, can you say it louder than the sisters? Aha. Uh -huh. Can everybody say it together? Jesus. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. He shall appear by the power in the blood of Jesus. Aha. 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 Saints. Saints. Saint, 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 tonight, 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 saint, put that here, Rakayaba, Riba Kapanda Yaba Shente Yaba, open your mouth, 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 you must see God, you must see Him, you must see Him, open your mouth. Bosapana Kapoya Bashante Abaraba Riba Kapanda Satayaba Aha 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 Apia 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 Oh yes Oh yes E Jesus Then we pray Aha You will see the fruit of that prayer tonight Tonight we have asked him to appear. Say this loud and clear. Blindness and deafness of the spirit. In the name of Jesus. Deal with the blindness and deafness of the spirit. In the name of Jesus. Yes, in Jesus' name we praise. One more. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. My Father, I want to experience your power in the name of Jesus. Jesus name we praise wonderful God we thank you let this anointing that came upon us now continue to overshadow our lives and by your power by your mercy appear unto each and every one every cloudiness and confusion in our way let the light of your presence clear them away in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Have your seat, beloved. Let's rise up on our feet. As we stretch our two hands up to the Lord, I will enter into the Holy Ghost hour. You sing this song loud and clear. You are worthy, Lord. 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 You are Angels are singing. You are worthy. You 
Angels are singing. You are worthy. Angels are singing. We are singing. Oh Lord, lift up Jesus. He is King of Kings. Lift up Jesus. He is Lord of Lords. Lift up Jesus. He is King of Kings, King of Kings, and Lord of Hallelujah. Sing it loud and cry. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, yes. Be all alone, Regal. Be all alone, Regal. Be all alone, Regal. He was all coming. Be God. Sing it loud and clear. Be God. He walk on beggar, 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 beggar. Yes, 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 beggar. Beggar. Jesus is on the royal throne. Oh, Jesus is on the royal throne. Alpha sits on the royal throne. Omega sits on the royal throne. Hallelujah. Hey. Hey. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Sing it loud and clear. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm not moved by what I see. We are only moved by the word of God. Yes, yes. Oh, we are not moved by what we see. We are only moved by the word of God. Hallelujah. Eh, a little louder. Eh, hallelujah. 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 Eh, hallelujah. Eh, amen. Thank you, Jesus. You will pray this prayer with boiling anger. And it's the only prayer point we have for this Holy Ghost service. And praying it is enough for the breakthrough that God wants to give you tonight. Every power of my father's house that wants me to die in this condition. Damn! In the name of Jesus. Sasekaya Boshanda. Aha. Deal with that power tonight. In the name of Jesus. Aha, aha. Aha, aha, aha. Yes, yes. Don't negotiate with his powers. Mosekate abo shende abo kolaba. Mosekate abo ko ponta. 
I shall not die in this condition. I shall not die in this condition. I must move forward. 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 To the glory of the name of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we praise. Chris, we need to pray it one more time. Every power of my mother's heart that wants me to die in this condition. In the name of Jesus. Aha, 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 aha. Riba Kapala Santa. Mania Mokapanda Santa. Deriba Kapanda Shanta Yaboshanta. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Begin to thank the Lord for this evening. Begin to thank the Lord for this evening. For what he has done for you. Thank him, thank him, thank him. Thank him. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Let us share the grace in fellowship.